Hero Quest has returned, so should you buy it? In this video, I'll be unboxing and analyzing the new Hero Quest and seeing if it's worth the money. Thank you very much Hasbro for sending me this package right here. When Hasbro sent me an email saying they were going to send me something to review, I was quite surprised and to be honest, I was not expecting this package. What I was expecting was something small, maybe something like the dwarf with the dice box, or even the knight expansion because that was also coming out around the time of the retail release. So I am surprised but also thankful that Hasbro spent this much money and sent me a base game to unbox and review. So let's get this thing opened. It's in a rather nice box and it opens almost like a shoe box. Got a nice brick pattern on the side and inside is the base game. On top there's instructions for me as a content creator and also a note from Zargon. Tremble before me human for I am Zargon, dread sorcerer and your future ruler. In my inestimable benevolence, I offer you a precious gift as a means to bind you to my empire. I have taken from Avalon Hill a trove of the new Hero Quest board game, lest they feel my wrath. And now I pass it on to you, mostly because the goblins were using the boxes to build forts. Inside this cache dwells a wealth of minions to do your bidding, and also some foolish heroes such as the elf, barbarian, dwarf, and wizard. Does Avalon Hill think they can challenge the supreme might of Zargon? If so, they are mistaken, for these heroes are no match for the dread forces I wield. Now go and learn more about Hero Quest by reading the note from Avalon Hill on the back of this missive so that I can return to the important task of conquering all the known realms. And on the back we have information about the game. In the Hero Quest Dungeon Crawl board game, heroes work together to complete epic quests, find treasures, and defeat the forces of evil. This semi-cooperative board game has one player taking on the role of Zargon, the Game Master, while four mythical heroes, Barbarian, Dwarf, Elf, and Wizard, team up in their quest for adventure in a maze of monsters and eerie dark dungeons. Players can immerse themselves in the fantasy with the stunning artwork and 65 plus detailed miniatures. The game comes with 14 quests and has limitless replayability because players can also build their own quests and create their own stories. Gather friends together for an exciting night of tabletop gameplay and an epic battle of good and evil. The game is for 2-5 players ages 14 and up. Though that age limit is mostly just because of like pointy swords, so it's actually lower. Closer to what the original game was. Your human friends can pre-order Avalon Hill's Hero Quest now at Hasbro Pulse for $125.99 USD. If you want more of Zargon, you can follow him at HeroQuest on Twitter, and he'll give you updates and puns as well. Zargon ends this letter with, Now, go mortal, and enact my terrible bidding. Dreadfully yours, Zargon. And let's get this out of this larger shoebox thing. Something interesting with this box that they sent me, the outer one, is that it has the new Avalon Hill logo, while the actual game has this old one. From this point on in the video, here's what you're getting in the retail release. And you can tell that this is the retail version, because it has the barcode right there. The version that I got in my Mythic tier does not. Here's the back of the box in case you want to read it, but there's also pictures of all the stuff online when you order the game. There are four stickers holding everything together, so I'll slice them and we'll see what's inside. A word of warning with these stickers is that if you try pulling them off too fast, it's going to rub the printing off the box, so you either have to use a hairdryer to remove them slowly, or you can pull them off slowly, but even then the edge of the sticker kind of leaves a bit of your box off. Just an aesthetic thing, but it's important to know. Lifting off the lid, we have ourselves what appears on first glance to be another lid, but this is actually a cardboard sleeve. There are two within this set. There's this, housing the furniture first. Oh, that's interesting. Different from what I thought with my Mythic tier. And the one on the bottom, has the miniatures in it. Then below that is where the game board is housed, the GM screen and tiles, and at the bottom of the box is just a cardboard spacer. So it's just hollow underneath there in case you need extra room for something. Let's take a look at this package of stuff. Peeling off the two paper things, we reveal the set of tiles that you need to punch out for the game, the rule book, as well as the quest book that tells Zargon where to place the monsters, the furniture, and all that type of stuff. If you'd like, you could read this first page of lore, and you can see what the icons on the map look like, but I'm not going to reveal too much because that's spoilers. And this is Zargon's GM screen. Has the same information as the old American one did, just of course with the new artwork on this side. And it does look nice. 
I must say. The rulebook, of course, tells you how to play, giving you instructions about the turns, how hero movement works, how Zargon's turn works, how line of sight functions, searching for secrets, recording stuff on your character sheet, different types of traps, and this game note thing I think is kind of useless just because of the type of paper that this is. I feel like something like Loose Leaf or Real Notebook would be a lot better than this. So I'd say just leave this page blank. So these are the tiles that you get. I'll punch one of these out so you can see it. Here's what it looks like. You can see a little bit of the texture on there. This side is for blocking off entrances and this side... I'm actually not sure what that pile of rocks is for. But in case you were wondering size to the original, it's actually fairly close. Just a little bit larger. You can really see it on this side. Wow. Same thing with the skulls. The new ones are obviously quite a bit larger. This little icon here is for turn order, even though it'll either be one or the other, so it's not that important. For the new version of the game, unlike the old one, that only have this pattern of stairs, there's also straight stairs in case you need. And another thing that's cool is that they've repurposed these two wide blocked hallway pieces, also for some great things in case you want to use it. And we have secret doors as well, which look like that compared to the old one. And on the flip side, there's the pit trap for this variant of tile anyways. Well, what about the board? What's that like? I'm glad you asked. This is a board, it folds up into quarters I believe, or maybe it's called trifold just because there's only a split right here, but it's a very nice board I would say. You have all your different rooms there of course, very nice texture on here, and the hero quest text is on that side over there instead of over on this long side. Other than that, everything is basically the same from the old, except for better textures of course, looking maybe a little bit more realistic due to computer graphics. What are the miniatures and furniture like? Let's find out. Taking this out of the cardboard sleeve, we have our plastic tray with all the miniatures. Giving it a quick look over, we have gargoyle, dread warriors all down here. Abominations that replace the Femirs, different types of orcs spread out with different weapons, equaling I believe it's eight of them. Four skeletons up in the top right, six goblins right here, two mummies, two zombies, the dread sorcerer, barbarian, dwarf, elf, wizard over here, and of course the dice. Now this plastic tray is where you're going to have a little bit of trouble. As much as I appreciate this thing from an organizational standpoint, the way that Hasbro has executed it is way too tight for miniatures. It really makes them difficult to get out. Here's the type of detail you can expect. This right here is a Dread Warrior. Yes, this mace is bent and I'll get to that a little bit later. But I suppose we should take a look at all these dice. They're a little tricky to get out of the tray. These two are obviously your movement dice. These are just d6s. There's not, nothing special with these. I just rolled double sixes. These are what's called 3 2 1 dice. So on three faces are the skull, like that. On two faces are the good shield, the lion. And on one face is the evil shield that monsters defend from. One thing you may be able to notice with some of these dice is that there are some defects. Like you can see this guy on the left has a little bit more inking than he's supposed to, and this lion's mouth is not as defined as this mouth. If you want a comparison to the old dice, they're quite a bit bigger, and of course they unfortunately do not have the rounded corners. They're more squarish. So if that's a big deal for you, that's something to watch out for. And yes, they roll of course, they are dice. So yeah, these are really difficult to get out of the plastic tray. One thing that I'd suggest for you to do is try deforming these tabs to get things out rather than put pressure on the miniatures. Oh, that one came out easy, but sometimes they don't and they make that sound. Here we have a female orc, or elf hero. There's decent detail on all this stuff, which is good. The dwarf, barbarian, oh no, what happened to her weapon? That is very bendy. That's more bendy than I've ever seen. Oh my. It's fixable, but still. These abominations are others with very bendy weapons. About half of these miniatures come out perfectly fine, and half of them come out of this tray really difficult. Especially this orc up here. 
You really have to push on the stuff before he goes out. With these two plastic trays being so troublesome, that has given opportunities to companies like Battlefoam and Feldher to create their own foam trays that holds everything nicely in place and not too tightly. I just have things sitting in here right now because I'm afraid to put them back in. But with those, you do not have to worry because it's nice, gentle foam. There's also another one that's made of wood. Just nice little separations to put all your different pieces into. If Hasbro really wanted to, they could also take this opportunity themselves to redesign this or design a new one that consumers could buy separately, an officially branded tray or storage solution. I know they are a toy company primarily, but having some kind of accessory like that could be beneficial for their company, though maybe people are just gonna stick to the ones that they know like Battlefoam and Feldher. Now for close-ups of the miniatures. Here's all the undead, the heroes, dread warriors, and gargoyle, Abominations and all the goblins. And all eight of the orcs. If you'd like to see comparisons to the old miniatures, then it's your lucky day. Here are two skeletons side by side. The old GW one that's much chunkier is on the left, and the new one very obviously is on the right. One thing that isn't as good about this new skeleton is that the mouth detail is way softer. Like on this, I know that I've kind of put white paint there, but you can really tell that there are teeth there in the texture, even with a bunch of paint on it, whereas this one's so soft. For instance, I have one here that's in the process of being painted, and even with paint on there, you can't even see it at all. Or you can see it very faintly, if anything. Just thought that you should know that. Here's the old orc on the right compared to the new one on the left. You can tell that they're definitely different fantasy styles, with this one being the old Warhammer looking one, whereas this one's more of a Warcraft one. And yeah, you can see with a male orc as well. If anything, these new miniatures are not hunched over, whereas Warhammer orcs always were, so they could be around the same height. These ones actually have armor on them, but if you take a look at something like this guy with the sword, they have armor on except for their abs. So that's a funny design choice. As well as, while there are ones with huge swords, they're duplicates, just a variance, whereas the old ones had this orc with the special sword with a notch in it to indicate leader orcs, and the new set does not, unfortunately. There's an axe, there's this style of sword, there's this style, and there's a mace, which this one's also bendy too. The old orcs had the option of a cleaver, a scimitar style sword, or a flail, and the rest were just repeats of that, except for the guy with the big sword. So there is more variation in the new version of the game. Then we have goblins. They are fairly close, but the new ones definitely have larger ears. I do have one that's slightly painted. These new miniatures do take paint fairly well, although with more details on here it's less likely that people are going to be getting their start on miniature painting, though I could be wrong. With the goblins, if anything, they look pretty close to each other, honestly. It's not too different besides different weapon options, with there being a cleaver, a curved sword similar to the old one, and double daggers instead of the short sword looking thing. And the old goblins have these three weapon options. Then we have the mummy. This thing is honestly very close to the old one, with minor differences being the difference in pose. It's skinnier than the old chunky GW one, and the placement of open flesh compared to bandages is slightly different. You can still see there's some on the face there. The knee is a bone this time. It's cool though, I like it. Then the zombie, this is a sculpt that I wasn't so sure about, but I'm growing to appreciate it. It is a zombie screaming with its head tilted. So when I do that, it looks a little bit more normal and that is its hair on the top. And compared to the old one, rather than having a sword and shield, this old guy used to have a cleaver on a big stick. The new one is shirtless while the old one had a jacket. And again, another one that's in a mid-stage of painting. And it looks all right, I like it. And you may have noticed here that these miniatures do click really easily into a painting handle because they're 28 millimeter size. When compared to something like this that grips a little bit more awkwardly, that's a new design change that I appreciate. Then here's the Dread Warrior, compared to the old Chaos Warrior that looks closer to Slambo. The biggest difference besides these being maces and those being axes, 
are of course the presence of a shield as well as a cape. This one has a lot more detail including on the chest there. You can see it's a skull and the shield is a face as well. And they look like evil knights similar to the old ones. Then here's the Dread Sorcerer compared to the Chaos Sorcerer or in other words Sir Ragnar or whatever other proxy miniature he needs to be. And on this new one he has a very thin staff so that's something to watch out for. The new one has a full robe. The old one didn't even have a staff and he had more like a loincloth almost type of robe. As well as this guy's robe has multi layers. It has almost like a shawl thing almost like you're graduating. I don't know what it's called. And again the new miniatures are a lot less chunky compared to the old ones. This is an abomination and this is the old Famir. This is a Games Workshop thing which is why Hasbro was not able to reproduce it and they instead replaced it with this fish monster. It's something different and I kind of like it. It's very similar to a D&D monster. Though fish monsters have existed in fantasy before that, they have webbed fingers here, spines on their back, while the old Famiers were more like swamp dwelling cyclopses. The last of the monsters, the gargoyle. These two again are fairly close, but of course Hasbro also had to change the design because this is actually close to a GW Bloodthirster. On the back, unlike the old one with those separate pieces, this new one is multiple pieces that were glued together, so as far as you're concerned, it's one piece. And it has itself a nice big sword, as well as an axe, which, oh, this one has a bendy handle. That's not good. My Mythic tier version of this did not have a bendy handle. Another difference is the difference in face type and the ears, while this one had a big ol' helmet on it. I suppose the natural horns of this one actually replaced that helmet. And now, the heroes. We have the new wizard and old wizard. They are fairly close, they're both wearing capes, they both have staffs. The new one is a moon for the staff. Oh wow, the new one has a hood. And they have that same little circlet thing on as well. Very nice. Next, let's move on to the elf. In the base game, the elf is now female. And instead of having to try and write runes on the sword in blue paint, they're actually part of the sculpt. You can see it reflected in the light. She also has a cape, which the old one did not have, as well as some potions and other things on her belt, while this just had one little pouch that was supposed to hold potions and stuff. Once again, even though things are brought up to 28mm and 1 inch scale, all the faces and stuff are quite a bit smaller than the old ones. We have the dwarf. This new guy is quite a bit larger than the old, you can tell here, and his weapon's quite a bit larger too. Sheesh, that's quite a difference. Turning them around, they are fairly similar again, which is good. And these new miniatures, as you can tell, are in more dynamic poses usually. That's also reflected with the Barbarian. Interestingly enough, the Barbarian is the only one out of these miniatures that is on a scenic base. And he's standing up on a rock. Here's the old one. The broadsword got a lot broader, I would say, on the new miniature. Again, it is very similar similar stance. The new miniature is wearing sandals, while the old one was wearing boots. That was a brief overview of the miniatures and the new versus the old. You now know what the miniatures look like, but what about the furniture? That's in this other sleeve. And I should say it's not just furniture in this tray, you can see the character sheets, the stack of cards. One thing that I have noticed that's an improvement from my mythic here is actually in the plastic here. I don't know if you can see it really too well or not, but they've put cardboard in there to reinforce the sides, just because this tray is quite a bit heavier than the miniatures, which is very good, I think. Let's first take a look at this thick stack of character sheets. There's more than enough for all your adventures here. Still has a spot for your name, your character's name, how many attack dice you have, defend dice, how many starting body and mind points you have, what weapons you have equipped, what armor you're wearing, and boxes to record your body points, you just put the number in each corresponding box, as well as the quests that your hero has completed, gold coins, and potions. And there are a lot, as I had mentioned before. Just like with the miniatures, the stuff in this plastic tray is also difficult to get out, but overall it's not that bad. The first thing that I'll be looking at is the sorcerer's table. Something that I actually do appreciate with this new plastic, is that these candles are slightly more flexible than the old. I know that might seem like a bad thing, but it means that they're less likely to be snapping. My piece is primed here, but you can definitely tell how one of the candles snapped off from the big candle holder, and that's a common fault with these old ones. 
so maybe this new plastic solves that. Another thing you might notice is that there is a lot more texture on the tabletop, and the pages on this one appear to be blank, while on the old book it had little engraved writing, just something interesting there. And of course, the thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that these are solid plastic. No more cardboard pieces, instead you get nice plastic moldings of all the wood parts, instead of having to attach them into these little things, which that used to sit just like that. So while you don't have to worry about these cardboard pieces breaking anymore, another negative that you could say is that furniture pieces look a little bit more bland when they're unpainted. And that's something that's very apparent, especially with the bookshelves and the fireplace, which I'll get to later. Moving on, we have the torture rack. This one is very similar to the old, makes sense because they're meant to represent the same piece of furniture, with a couple minor differences being this new one's made of stone, or supposed to be stone rather than wood that's reinforced with a little bit of metal, and the stretcher part is run by a crank instead of two arms. Another big difference is it doesn't have the skull, and that is because for whatever reason the skulls and rats in the set are just separate. Be careful with the rats because they can go flying when you take them out. Same as with the skulls, these do not have any pegs or anything. I'm honestly not sure why they are separate. I would have liked them on pegs. It would just make more sense to have them attached to the cupboards. So it's less likely that they get lost, especially if people are not using these plastic inserts anymore. Like there is a little notch at the top where you could maybe set them on, but there's nothing to secure them. Like the pegs of the old one. You can see how there's little pegs down in there. But maybe people can glue them on if they want. And another thing, same as the old rats, these tails might break off. Although maybe with the flexible plastic, it'll be prevented. So because I've showed it already, I should be speaking about these cupboards. This is the bookshelf. There are two of them. And then there's the one that looks like an actual cupboard here. These are again solid plastic. They're very sturdy. They're not going to be breaking anytime soon. And I really like these, actually. The only downside here being they're less colorful. Like, I did paint the top of this, but you can tell just the cardboard is a lot more colorful than the plain brown. But if you're a miniature painter, you can easily paint it, and it's definitely playable as a board game without even painting any of the stuff at the same time. The size of the new ones is actually surprisingly a little bit smaller. I don't know if you can see that too well, but yeah, it's a lot smaller. And as I was saying previously, there's a lack of color, especially with the bookshelf. Another interesting thing is that because two of these are identical, they've gone for a hybrid between the two types of bookshelf. There was one that was purely books with scrolls and stuff, and then there was just this one. And so they've kind of gone for a mixture. You can see the skull in the back there. There are some scrolls on the left side there. And the back, of course, has texture. Similar to how there's texture on the back of the old ones as well. I really like these tables. Again, they are fairly close to the old ones, with the difference being there's a different shape because it doesn't have to account for this overhanging cardboard. And again, it's something else that's actually slightly smaller than the old, which is kind of interesting. Another cool thing that I noticed is there's even texture on the bottom here. And it looks to me like this is made up of some kind of timber, while this one was individual boards, it almost looks like with wood edging, and this one seems to have, I don't know if you'd call it metal banding or what. Also has feet on this table, that's pretty nice. And there are certainly functional tables. Then we have the throne. I can see a little bit of glue there, because this stuff is multiple pieces glued together, so it appears like one piece for us. If you are painting it, that's not going to be a big deal, and if you aren't, you're just going to have to deal with a little bit of shine. The old throne is something that I had disassembled for priming, so I've just temporarily put it together. But you can tell how the cardboard was often off center but you're not going to have the issue because it's actually molded into the plastic like you can feel that texture there chair even has some nice texture on the top and on the back too surprisingly if i didn't say it already one advantage with this new furniture is you don't really have to put it together and risk breaking pegs and things like that like with the old stuff so that's good here is the alchemist desk the new one just like before it's very solid plastic you have the plastic all the way around instead of being a plastic element on a cardboard piece and surprisingly these are nearly the same size like you can tell how close they look and instead of being a separate piece the scale is actually molded on here the bottles on the old were separate another thing on a peg well with the new one they are glued in place if i hold it in the light like this you can see how much more texture there is the quill is built in just like the old one Another difference I noticed is that these papers that were in the drawer on the new one are on the desk. 
And here's the cardboard for the old one, just kind of so you can see what that looked like versus the new. I'm giving you a little bit of warning in advance that this weapons rack is very tough to get out. Or not, maybe, maybe it was easier than I thought. The warping on this isn't too bad, but I have seen some online that were a lot worse. And my previous one from the Mythic tier was maybe a little bit worse. But again, comparing this to the original, it's actually smaller, strangely enough, it's shorter. Otherwise, it has the exact same weapons as the old. You have the shield with the lion on it. You have this long curved sword. You have an ax hanging from the weapon rack. You have a billhook polearm, a mace, a long sword, a flail, and the shield on the right is now replaced by the symbol that's on the dice for a round shield. And if you can't see it already, there's wood texture molded into this plastic, whereas on the old one people had to try and paint it on. I didn't bother with this just because it wasn't worth it. Another improvement that I see is that the weapons actually have little metal pegs, whereas these ones were just kind of somehow floating there. I think that's a good improvement. Here we have the tomb. A cool feature with this one is that it opens. Unfortunately, it's too small to fit a skeleton miniature or anything like that inside, but people have been storing the rats and skulls in there to keep them safe. Again, it's something that's actually a little bit smaller than the old, which is kind of interesting. And here is what the old cardboard element looked like compared to the new base of this. Here is the fireplace. I was about to say that it's not going to be warping like the old one, how it was bent over due to being a thin cardboard thing, but you can tell due to the way that the plastic functioned, it is slightly bent over, that is fixed by the hot water trick. Another difference with the old is that instead of having a picture in there, there's nothing so you can either try and paint something or stick something from the printer in there. And in terms of the base, it has a similar footprint as the old, with the fire on this one of course being less vibrant because it's solid gray right now compared to a printed piece. And other than that, this front part is actually made into the casting or the molding instead of being flat printed, so that's kind of cool. And the other thing you might notice is for whatever reason, these logs are slightly elevated there, and I'm not sure if there's maybe glue that's keeping it in place or what. There is brick texture on the back as well. That'll dry brush up really nice, I think. Here is what a chest looks like. This is very sturdy again, and has wood texture on the bottom as well in case you want that for whatever reason. It has a nice animalistic looking clasp, and that is what one of the old chests looked like. I like the new one better, just because the clasp of it is centered rather than the keyhole being possibly off-center due to the way that the printing worked out, and again they are a similar size, which is good. Also contained within this tray are a selection of doors. I counted and I believe that there's 21 in here five of which are the closed door variant, and the other 16 are open doors. You might be seeing a little bit of an issue with this, but first let's compare it to the old doors. Here's what the two closed doors look like, and you can tell on the new one, besides the symbol up above the door there, that there's nice wood texture on the door, and the hinges are there, as well as a little door knocker door handle, and there's vines all up these doors, so that's pretty cool. Size is actually very similar despite being a slightly larger grid with one inch. One advantage of the plastic now is that it's not going to be bending and breaking on you. That was a common fault of these. Here's what I mean, you can see how the cardboard's been folded over, it's a little bit creased. If the light catches it correctly, you can see that. And here's the open variant of the door, no surprise that it looks nearly identical to the closed version, except it doesn't have a door in there. And the reason that there's a lot more open doors than closed is because you're going to be encountering a lot more open than closed doors. So the issue with these doors, as you may see and may have seen in the tray, is that many of them are warped. I'm finally going to explain what this means and how to fix it. With these new miniatures being made of the new softer plastic, rather than the harder plastic that the old ones were and that Games Workshop miniatures are today, that results in some kind of warping. I'm not sure if it's because they're stuck into the plastic tray when they're too hot or what, but they do warp very badly. And the solution for that is actually just to stick them in some hot, almost boiling water. And then once you move the things back into position, you then set it by throwing it into some ice water for a couple seconds and that permanently fixes it. So besides the curved weapons and like the curved door frames, the other issue is warped bases. You can tell when I push up on this side that the base goes quite up, and that is again remedied by hot water. 
This of course fixes things like this guy's weird bent axe when it should be straight. I know that the technique works because I've done it for all my Mythic tier miniatures. Here is one from the retail release that I just unboxed in this video. While this is an abomination on the left here that I had fixed, and you can see how much straighter his staff or his spear thing is compared to this one. It's a little bit difficult to get them both in frame, but you can definitely see how the one on the right's a lot more bent. And so that is kind of unfortunate with this game, but even when everything is all bent this extreme, it's still functional as a board game. And for anybody who has experience with miniatures, at least some, they should be able to figure out how to do it. Same thing with removing mold lines and that type of stuff. That just happens with miniatures and so it's easy to solve. Last, but certainly not least, I'm taking a look at the cards. This is a rather thick stack, because there's a lot of things in here. There's different sections of this deck because it's all the different types of cards together. And first, I guess if you want to say on the back, we have these four cards. These are things you hand to the heroes, and it explains the actions that they do, as well as four hero cards. Barbarian, with the description on the back, Dwarf, Elf, and Wizard, and of course it has all their stats, their starting equipment, how many movement dice they have, how many dice they get to attack and defend with. And comparing those small cards to the old ones, the old ones were actually big thick cardboard things, the thickness of the tiles. And on the back was actually where the action stuff was instead of being stuck on a different card. The same information is there, it's just spread out on two cards instead of one large cardboard thing. But other than that, the information's exactly the same. Oh, something else I noticed, they've changed the wizard's color scheme for this new game. He now has an orange moon on his tunic rather than blue. Next, the cards with this gargoyle looking face are of course the monster cards. And I can also compare these to the old. They are fairly close in size, but you can see the new cards are quite a bit wider, as well as different monster faces. So you can see a nice comparison of the pictures. This, the new stuff, is full art, and both cards do have the same icon that it will be on the map. And the stats are exactly the same as you might expect. The Famir versus Abomination there, Goblin versus Goblin. The differences in the gargoyle cards, one being looking like a drawing, the other one looking like the actual gargoyle. Same thing with the mummy with the one on the left looking way more realistic. The orc looking like that, while the old one looks more like a drawn version of a Warhammer orc. I don't appear to have an old skeleton card out of the components that I have left, but I can show a picture of it right here. And then we have the zombies. Then below that on the deck we have all the artifacts. These appear to be things that you find only during certain times, during certain quests and they can help you out quite a bit. Things like the Ring of Fortitude, the Spell Ring, Spirit Blade to fight the Witch Lord, Talisman of Lore, Wand of Magic, and Wizard's Cloak, and the Staff. Next are the equipment cards, replacing the armory piece of cardboard that you used to get. And there are multiple things of equipment in case heroes need them, but you can also still dish out equipment even if you don't have extra cards for it. Let's say that four heroes want to buy a helmet, but there's only three cards here. You can still have all four buy it, except for restrictions for their specific hero. But you have holy water, longsword, different things that are worth a gold amount that you pay for it. The shield and short sword toolkit to help you disarm traps if you're not the dwarf. Then these are the dread spells, which used to be called chaos spells. Certain monsters can cast these and they are detrimental to the heroes. Things like Cloud of Dread that paralyzes heroes, Command, putting one hero under the command of Zargon, Fear, scary symbol of the Dread Sorcerer, Firestorm, Lightning Bolt, making their weapons or armor be destroyed, causing them to sleep in response to one of their sleep spells, summoning orcs or summoning undead, or creating a whirlwind. Next are the element cards. These are cards that the heroes get to use, the wizard and elf. There's not too many of each. Three water spells here with the water elemental looking like the sea on the back. Sleep, veil of mist, and water of healing. Four earth spells with the earth elemental looking like a giant rock golem. We have heal body, pass through rock, and rock skin. For the fire spells, there's a fire elemental represented by a wildfire, and there's a couple spells with this one as well. Ball of flame, courage, and fire of wrath. In terms of air, that's looking like some massive storm almost like a cyclone or hurricane, something like that. We have Genie, Swift Wind, and Tempest. The rest of the cards here are part of the treasure deck. This can include good things that your heroes search for in rooms. Otherwise, there could be bad things like hazards, 
or wandering monsters, which the quest will tell you what type of wandering monster you need to place. I have now set up the board in just some random orientation so you can see how the pieces all fit cohesively together. And it looks like a nice big old board game, which is exactly what it is. Before I arrive at a conclusion, there's a couple more things that I want to add. Firstly, is that with this game, an app can come with it so you do not have to have a player to play Zargon. You can instead make the app do it. And it's also good for learning the rules too, and I'll be doing that between now and Christmas before I play with family. Additionally, while I have only showcased the base game, the expansions are coming. Here is Return of the Witchlord, this was part of my Mythic tier, but I have seen it listed on GameStop already so you should be able to order that, and I imagine Keller's Keep will be there fairly soon as well. With that out of the way, it's time for my final thoughts with this game. While it's not without its faults, like the bent weapons, and the plastic trays that fit miniatures way too tightly, overall, Hasbro's new version of Hero Quest is exactly the same as the 1990 American version, albeit with a changed art style, most notably described by the orc here. But all in all, it's functionally the same board game, and I'm glad that they haven't changed too much to the core system, but they are still adding things. For instance, this dragon that came with my mythic tier as part of the stretch goals, and I'm not sure if it will be available for retail or not. And there you have it. Those are my final thoughts about the retail version of Hero Quest. Thank you again for Hasbro for sending me this to review, and thank you everyone so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do give me a like and a sub, because that really helps me out, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!